Hi, first grade. We are back for another social science lesson about the sun. What you are going to need for today's lesson with me is this book right here that you have. Our sun, it's located in the stars, the moon, and the sun bag that we've been working with. And I'm going to project on my screen with the book, kind of like how I did last week with that moon book, just so that you can see those photographs in color. And then we can talk about a couple other things too. But what you can do is have this book out in front of you and be following along with me as I read. So I would, I would suggest having your finger under each word as you read. That way you have it right in front of you. And this is also great because when we get to the assignment, you also have the book right in front of you to refer back to. Or you could always refer back to the video as well, but it's nice sometimes to just have it right in your hands. And then we will be completing page 11 as our assignment today. And I will explain that in a little bit, a little bit, oh my goodness, a little bit, all you need to have with you right now is this book, Our Sun, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at this book. Even right away, like look at the difference between the photograph on my screen and the one that you guys have, right? It's just really nice to see the colored photograph. Our Sun. This right here also is a nonfiction text. It is full of true and real facts and information, and it's written by Hannah Gramson. We've also been talking a little bit about author's purpose and why authors choose to write books, and our author, Hannah Gramson, chose to write this text to inform us all about the sun, okay? Oh, such beautiful photographs. Over here, our focus question, there's two of them. What is the sun and why is it important to life on earth? So those are two questions that we want to be able to answer once we are done reading this text. And then we have also two, since it's a nonfiction text, a whole bunch of text features. Right here, this is our title. And then photographs are also text features too. Some words to know, energy, hail, humans, liquid, solid, weather. And in this text here, the really cool thing is that in the very back of it, go ahead and take your book right now. I want you to flip to the very back page. Looks like this. This right here is called the glossary. The glossary is another text feature. And what you are going to see at the back of the glossary is all of these words right here, the words to know. They typically take words that are really important for us to know or words that we may not know the definition to or what it means and stick it in the back in the glossary. And let's go ahead together and go through these words right now. Very first word you're going to see, energy. Energy is power from a resource, such as the sun or wind, used to provide light, heat, or to work machines. And when we read, we are going to find that on page four, which is why you will see right now as you're looking along with me in this book, where it says page four. The next word, hail, rain that falls from a cloud, then is blown upward and freezes before falling as ice. We will see hail on page 12. Next one, humans. They're simply people. We are humans. We will see that word on page nine. Next word is liquid, capable of flowing and changing shape while keeping the same size. We will see liquid on page seven. The next word is solid, having a firm, stable form or shape. We will see solid on page six. And then the very last word on this glossary is weather, the conditions in the sky, such as clouds, rain, or wind. We will see that on page 10. And we know about weather because we talk about it every morning in morning meeting. And we also learned a little bit about the weather too. Okay. Let's go ahead and read our book. Right here is another text feature. It is called the Table of Contents, and the Table of Contents organizes all the information in the text, and it tells you where you will find each topic. So for example, if you just wanted to learn about light from the sun, you would go ahead and flip to page eight, and on page eight, you will start learning about light from the sun. All right, let's go ahead and start reading our book. What is the sun? This right here is a text feature. It is 
a heading and the heading kind of like sets the table there. It tells you, okay, well, the heading is what is the sun and the writing down below, you will learn about what the sun is. So whatever the heading is down below that text will be about whatever that heading is. Okay. And then over here too, before we continue reading, we have a photograph and then we have a little caption and the caption says the sun is the closest star to earth, but it is still very far away. And the great thing about those captions is if you were not sure what is in that photograph, the caption provides you with that information. All right, go ahead and put your finger under the word the and follow along with me as I read. The sun is a star. A star is a large ball of gas that gives off energy. The sun is the closest, closest star to earth. Over here, we see another photograph and the caption says, we can see and feel the sun's energy even on a cloudy day, which we've talked about a little bit in morning meeting that when we look outside the window and we see that it's cloudy outside, that does not mean that the sun is not out. The sun is still out, but the clouds are covering that sun. So we don't see it as bright as when it's a day without any clouds in the sky. When it's a day without any clouds in the sky or a few clouds, we can see that sun shining very brightly. The sun's energy. We can feel the sun's energy as heat. We can see the sun's energy as light. Without heat and light, there would be no life on earth. Here's another cool photograph. The sun will warm the snow and ice, turning them to liquid water. And that's when we see things melt. So when it gets really, really cold and we have, you know, these icicles where that water freezes, when the sun is out and the weather gets a little bit warmer, we start seeing that those will melt. And that's when you have to be super careful. You never want to walk underneath anywhere like this. You can stand afar and admire it and look at it and say how beautiful, but you never want to walk underneath anything that looks like this with all these icicles because they can always fall and they would hurt you if they hit you. So remember that there's a little life lesson. Do not walk underneath anywhere that has icicles like that. Heat from the sun. Without the sun's heat, earth would be too cold. The sun warms earth's land, air, and oceans. Without the sun's heat, water would be solid ice. Ooh, here's another really nice photograph. We see it's a photograph of horses, or of a horse, and the caption says, horses and other animals need water to drink. The sun's heat turns ice to liquid. Water we to liquid water we can drink. All plants and animals need to drink water to live. Ooh, this photograph over here, the caption says the sun makes it possible for us to see. Light from the sun. Without the sun's light, earth would be dark. We need the sun's light to see. Oh, so cute. Anyone know what this animal is? It's a koala. Many animals need plants to eat. And what you'll start learning about, and we may even touch on it a little bit this year, but the older you get, you're going to learn about this really long, fancy word, photosynthesis. And what that means is that plants actually take in sunlight and they're able to do this amazing process called photosynthesis, where they use that sunlight to make their food. It's so, so cool. So what needs to happen is the plants need that sunlight so that they can grow. And then the animals need those plants because that's what they eat. The sun's light also helps plants grow. Plants use sunlight to make their own food, which is what I was just talking about. It's that process called photosynthesis. Humans and other animals need plants to live. And we also eat plants, right? Like lettuce, if you like salads. I really like salads. Lettuce is a plant. There's other foods that grow in the ground too that need sunlight to grow. Like we learned about pumpkins, how pumpkins grow in the ground. Corn grows in the ground. 
trees grow and there's lots of food that actually grows on trees like apples and pears. Over here, the caption underneath this photograph says, we have rain because of the sun. The sun and weather. Without the sun, there would be no weather. The sun's heat turns liquid water to gas. Ooh, I do think it's really cool when you see clouds in the sky like this. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this, boys and girls, but especially when I was younger, if there were lots of clouds in the sky and it was nice outside, usually in the summer, you could just sit and watch the clouds. And if you watch really closely, you can see the clouds move. And sometimes too, you can even see some cool shapes that the clouds make. And right here, it's talking about in this caption, clouds can be all kinds of sizes and shapes. The gas rises into the air. When gas in the air gets cold, it turns into clouds. Over here, it says there would be no snow without the sun. Clouds are made of tiny drops of water. When the drops get bigger, they fall as rain, snow, or hail. Over here, this photograph is showing a bunch of different things happening. It says, we have heat, water, and weather because of the sun. The sun is important. Without the sun's heat, we would have no water or weather. Ooh, over here, grapes, yummy, look at the grapes. The sun helps us grow healthy food. Without the sun's light, we would have no plants or food. We need the sun to live on earth. Awesome, and then over here, sun safety, which some of you guys put some of these items on your page yesterday, that sun safety page says there are many things you can do to stay safe on a sunny day. Too much light and heat from the sun can hurt your eyes and skin. To stay safe when you play outside, follow these rules. Never look directly at the sun. Wear sunglasses and sunscreen. Sunglasses protect your eyes and sunscreen protects your skin because it's not fun to burn. Has anyone ever gotten sunburned before and then you have to put aloe or some type of lotion on it to make it feel better? It doesn't feel super good. So you want to make sure that you put sunscreen on. And then something else that's super important is that if you're outside at the pool or the beach, you have to reapply that sunscreen. So if you put it on right away when you get there or before you get there, that's great. But then in a few hours, you should also reapply that sunscreen to make sure that it's still protecting your skin. Over here to stay in the shade. If you've been outside in the sun a lot and you need a little bit of a break, you could go under a tree or under an umbrella or somewhere to stay in the shade. And then drink plenty of water. Plenty, plenty of water. That's even a reminder now. I'm going to take a sip of water. Even when you're not outside, you want to make sure that you drink plenty of water. Water is so good for you and you need water. All right, and here's that glossary that we went through together a little bit ago at the beginning of reading this. And the glossary, again, um, they select words that are important words that they bold within the text. So you guys saw that there were certain words like right here, hail, that was bold in the text, that word is going to pop up in the glossary. And then the glossary provides definitions of those words or explains to you what those words mean. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look at our assignment for today. Our assignment for today is page 11 in that the stars, the moon, and the sun bag that we've been working with. And you'll see it looks very similar to the page that we worked with last week with the moon. But now we're just talking about the sun. So up at the top where it says astronaut, you will of course write your name to get in that great habit of writing your name at the top of your paper. And you will see it says the sun is, can, has. Oh, sorry, got to bring it up a little bit. Is, can, has. What I'm going to ask you to do is write two examples for each box. So two examples of what the sun is, two examples of what the sun can do, and two examples of what the sun has. 
okay? You do not need to write complete sentences. You can just write word, one word or a few words or whatever you would like to do for this, as long as you have two examples for each. So you should end up having a total of six examples on this page because it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then after you finish that, go ahead and color those pictures on the page. So you can color the pictures of the sun. And I apologize, boys and girls, I had to wipe my nose really quick. So now I'm using hand sanitizer to make sure, I know my hands are all clean. I used it just a moment ago, so we are all good. All right, awesome. Then after you finish this page right here, you will go ahead and take a picture of it and then post it directly onto your class dojo portfolio. All right, first grade, I hope you have a great day and I will see you later. Bye.